glass in it. So the cover, inside cover. Um, so the first group is known as what? Control. Control characters or command characters. Um, so that's the first group that you can see. What's that known as? The command characters are um, are um, uh, control characters. Um, like I said, see, you have shift, shift out, we got um, carriage return, uh, new line, backspace, um, where's tab? These tab. are the ASCII characters you're going over? Um, yeah. So, um, so some of these, like I said, some of these exist in certain architectures. Um, one of the problems um, some people might see is carriage return, new line feed. Um, Windows requires a New line feed and then a carriage return to get a new space. Um, Linux, it, you just have to do a new line, and I think a Mac, it's a carriage return to get a new line. So basically, as you know, we're writing over here, and then to get start writing over here. Windows, it's new line, carriage return. Um, Linux, it's a carriage return, and um, Mac, it's I just have to do a new line. What is carriage return? Well, so basically is an old typewriter, so you're typing along an old typewriter, and you hit basically your enter key. Not enter key, but... Uh, you hit the... Yeah, you gotta hit that. You gotta, decide, you gotta hit the little thing you slide over. How was that point? Yeah. And so <laughs> that basically did, basically put your back over here. If you just did the enter, what it did, it shifted you down to over <coughs> here. So like I said, new line would just shift you down to here. That's why Windows does the carry to a new line, so it shifts you over and it does a new line to shift you down to here. And see, basically Linux and Mac are like, well, when you hit enter, we know you want a new line, so we're just going to start you over there. Or a carry return, we're going to start you over here. So if you ever opened up like a text document and like you wonder like why it's all spread out all the way over there, and, or like it's really formatted really weird, would you notepad would be a good example of that. Most likely the document was formatted in a Linux machine or a Mac machine. That's why it doesn't, that's why it looks really weird. So that's one of the what's one of the issues with the control characters. Um, like I said, some of these don't actually work. Like device control one. <laughs> I I didn't know what they what they mean by that. Or um, another favorite one. End of text and end of transmit. It's a, another good one. Um, it's old terminal based when you had old terminals. Um, Basically, had a big mainframe that all these terminal businesses connected to, and they use ASCII to communicate with one another. So they use these control characters to uh, control back to the mainframe of a, using their terminals. So, um, second grouping are known as our what group? Easy way. Digits, digits, and R. Um, well, we have I call them punctuation, but um, I guess because you have periods, you have the question mark, um, the comma here, yeah, yeah, um, yeah comma. So they have all your commas and question marks. Your, your <coughs> uh, so I said basically, is I would accept digits. You just say. Group two is digits to column. You know, basically, you just say, "Oh, this is my number, so my digits." And then this column is application specials. Yeah, application specials, which we only have a few specials, which is the um, bra uh, brackets, division sign, caret, um, underscore, and our at symbol. So then, next group. I'm going to ask you again, help you figure out more case letters and special, so just more of the, uh, more of our numbers. Um, key ones to remember to null, um, say new line, um, Important to remember on um, 
on the command turn. So. That's it on the ASCII. I'm going to go over one more example um, with a C program. So here, um, uh, okay. um, so hex 30 is um, the letter um, looped through a table, hex 30 is um, <coughs> 0, right? And 60 was um, less than sign? No, 60. So basically, is if you haven't figured it out, I have a char, basically some number, right? I can, like down below, I have a string, and I put just the actual, um, you know, letters, which ends up being numbers. And so basically, I can assign characters just like I do numbers, like an int. And so then I would get the output. So I use printf. For those of you who are familiar with C sharp, we use the right console like this um, to get it out. And so I'm going to quickly run, I'm going to comment out the string for a second. Um, let me find that in a second. You can see when I printed out the first time, I printed out the character. It's, you know, zero and the apostrophe. And then down below is the hex version of those numbers. So. Yeah. <laughs> so even if it's a, a number, you still print it as a character? Um, well, yeah. Like I said, it's basically, is, the way I use printf or the use console line is like, hey, it's a character being, the computer just knows it's a character. And so, you, I should the say, like, you know, it's a character. It's that it's indicator character. at the beginning, 0x, it says this is a character, right? Well, if you use the C, C sharp, they just know. It's a character, so it's going to print out the character. I told it C is a character, to print out the character. And then down here I said print it out as a number. The, the X is the hex. If I put, um, I can do this. This is just to show that there's no difference between, um, basically the computer there's no difference between if it's a number or an ASCII character. So I'm going to put it in integer value. Okay, so same with your table. So like you said, the decimal 96, it was hex 60 is the apostrophe. So print it out as the decimal in hex. Um, so. <coughs> That's just a straight up character in um, the computer. Now, I'm going to skip to the string. Alright, so I have a string, it's 10 characters long, it just says ABC. And you can see, if you're not familiar with these kind of syntax, it's a slash T, which means tab. Right? So it's going to replace this character here as a tab. And then it's going to have H, K, and then it has a slash N, which is your new line. So we'll do a new line, and then it will print uh, G. Okay. And then the print F, I had to change it to say, like I said, at C's up here, say it printed the character, and then down below I tell it to say it's a string, or print it as a string. When it pops up, I get A, B, C, D, C, printed a tab, and then H, K, <coughs> The new line here, and then it prints the key. Okay. 
I'm gonna add some more characters here because I thought I did. Okay. That's what I want to see the first time. Wow. Yep. You see these blue island crap right here? We don't even know what happened. It's just this garbage is left over in the buffer. Is it is it arm is it a oh um what's that called? A pointer. Is it a pointer? Is it, no. Is it a string of uh it, it kinda say it's a pointer error. But it overflowed or um what you had so many characters specified and let me see the code again, just Yeah. Well, it should have worked with ten too. If I had yeah, there's ten. Um, you have ten car You have ten in the array, right? Make it. We'll make. we we'll make it. Uh, there's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I made a character now. Right? Okay. Um, Sometimes it prints out garbage, it depends on what's in the data. Um, oh, okay. So I do more characters. Um, basically, is one of the things that we define as strings. I was doing it on the program. Um, if I do um, slash zero, it's known as null, right? Basically, is that actually tells me that this is the end of the string. It tells printf that it's the end of the string. That's how we denote that. We have an end of string. Um, so if I actually, right now it will just look like the normal that we had before. Um, but if I actually put this, <coughs> right before, I got ABC. So basically, is that's uh, no character it told me that was the end of my string. Even though my string is 10 characters long, I can cut off my string and build only three characters. So one of the things to remember is null, the end of a string, no the end of a string. So um, <coughs> that's the key for that. All right, any other questions on ASCII? Um, You'll probably uh, get more um, familiar when you actually have to do um, an assembly, the ASCII. So. That ended chapter two. Um, I'll let you guys decide. Do you want a quiz after the homework or before the homework? Okay. That means we won't have a quiz next week either, so don't worry about having a quiz. Um, I believe you guys can do it. Um, so, um, I would just say probably a week from Monday we'll have another quiz on like how year or two. Um, so. Okay, um, chapter three. All right. If you read it and it was confusing or weird, Sorry, it's probably going to be weird again today. Um, we're going to talk about um, basically the smallest, um, or the lowest we're going to get in this class. And I'm not going to test you a lot on it. Just think of it as an introduction or for your information. Uh, hopefully this sparks some interest. Um, for those who want electrical engineering or um, computer engineering. Um, and so. Um, I'm going to draw um, the graph. Um, we have this thing called um, volts um, and zero volts. Um, right before we said um, this is zero volts, which means a zero in our computer language, and then some positive voltage, um, which can be different. Um, some standards are 3.3. Um, five volts. Um, so that's basically what we denote as one. Um, it could be any of these uh, voltages that we denote as one. Um, so that's how we use electricity. 
so you do know what a zero is and what is one. All right. Um, so back, um, probably World War II days, um, they used um, vacuum tubes. Vacuum tubes, um, say, like a big giant light bulb inside is a, a vacuum. Um, <coughs> very little pressure inside. Um, this is glass, so it's like a light bulb glow. Um, And then there was a plate inside, a metal plate. And then another inside there was a um, filament, uh, like a regular light bulb. And basically, is if I put a charge on here, I'd create a current that's across and would light up the light bulb and actually send electricity down and down now. Put electricity on these lines and we send voltage down on this line. Is this a diode that you're making? No, this is a vacuum tube. Oh, vacuum. Sorry. So, sorry, where does, where does the voltage go? Um, basically, that put power on this line and then current would flow through. Um, in both directions, you're putting power up? No, 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 no. Like, sorry, go this way. Oh. Um, basically, is because of the vacuum, um, voltage was able to, to jump inside here. Right? Um, and so um, I was able to get current going through there. Um, the problem with these was they're really big. And how long did your light bulb last? You know? Um, they don't last very long. Um, if I remember, um, the ENIAC, they would have like, I think they had five individuals who would walk around and replace uh, vacuum tubes constantly um, to help calculate um, the projection of uh, the missiles. Um, and so, and they were really hot. These rooms would be hot. Um, with all these light bulbs, um, in there, they were really hot. So in about 1950, um, Bell Labs um, created what we know today as the transistor. I have a question. When, yeah. when, you, when you said that the electrical current jumped to the filament, mm -hmm. is that the is that how they used that would be a one yeah. binary? Yeah. So and if it didn't jump, it'd be zero. Mm -hmm. So that way, if I a current going through like this, this would be one current. Um, and then if they, if it was zero going through, um, I'd use zero, I know, zero out there. So basically just told, this one's one, this one's zero. So you had to basically send current to this to tell you that you have a one, which is kind of, um, I know confusing, but. But isn't the current itself determined? <laughs> I mean, why do you need to, I'm, I'm confused. I mean, if you're, isn't the current causing the one? Um, the voltage, sorry, the voltage. Or the, the voltage. The voltage causes the one. Okay, where's where's the voltage coming from? The voltage is coming from um, power. So you have these pulses of voltage going through, and yeah. when a pulse goes through, it's one. When it's not going through, it's zero. Yeah. What's determining the pulse? Um, I mean, isn't that kind of one and zero too? Is a clock, basically. Oh. So basically, is I have a five clock. Is that? <coughs> um, it's at the end of chapter six. Is the talk about the clock? Oh, okay. Uh, chapter three, sorry, chapter three, chapter three. So this says it's kind of a trick. So if I have a clock, looks. Uh, sorry, I hate jumping ahead of myself. Um, so you have a clock that's something similar like this. So it's going zero, one, it's in the same period. Mm -hmm. So this is, you know, let's say this is five milliseconds. Um, this is five milliseconds. And so then I have, this is my clock. Then I have. I'm just going to call it a data line or data, which basically is your ones and zeros here. Um, so I can go like this. 
what happens is it's like, okay, oh. I'm like, so I keep looking at these increments. That could be a punch card. Yeah, that's probably the best way to think of it as. Okay. So basically it's, oh, at this time frame is zero, this time frame is zero, this time frame is one, this time frame is zero, zero, one, Zero, zero, one, zero, zero, one. Uh, so basically, if you saw, if you say, say the screen was printing out this line it was going through, is your, it would be zero, zero, one, zero, 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 one. <coughs> and so you see these zeros, you see these light bulbs flashing like crazy, like as it goes on. So it'd be off, off, on, off, off, on. That's how they're going. Supposedly, vacuum tubes um, are starting to come back in some radios. They say they make better sound than uh, digital um, transistors. So, um, they do? I never heard it, so I don't know. I know someone who makes them. And he's amazing. He's a bunch of companies. Yeah. Very good. So, we're going to do a transistor, right? Uh, I said built, built and first one was built um, uh, was built by Bell Labs, but uh, Texas Instrument um, was one that actually um, first uh, produced it um, for um, public use. Um, <coughs> we're going to talk about um, two types of diodes. Um, they mark diodes as types. Um, it's type A through I don't know how many types there are, but. A was the first one they made, and so on. Um, and um, we call them MOS, which is uh, metal uh, oxide um, semiconductor. <coughs> and you want to say, it's a funny story with transistors, how they started actually learning to build these, um, kind of the same thing as uh, the guy who made penicillin, let the sandwich out, and uh, found out that the penicillin killed the uh, bacteria. Um, same kind of thing with the transistor. The guy was kind of, I don't know, either mad or frustrated with it, and he dumped it in water, and found out that it actually conducted electricity better. So that's how they started realizing, oh, hey, we're on to something. And so, <laughs> um, that's an interesting story that how we invent things in this world. Um, so two types um, is N type, all by accident, and uh, T type. Um, all of spells, remember this. They're just switches, just big giant switches, <laughs> or small, really, really small. Sorry. Um, Said this is the lowest I can go, and we're gonna go in this class. I'm not gonna grade you on this. Just remember, our computers are made out of two types, and uh, our transistors in our PCs are N-type and P-type transistors, um, and uh, they, in when we draw them by hand, they look like this, right? So we have a positive voltage here. I'm going to write down as the source. It's like, basically, it's always going to be on. So I have a battery connected to this. This will be directly to my battery. And then this is going to be known as um, ground or the drain. So this will be connected to the other end of your battery. So this is always connected. And then I have this line out here, which is um, what's going to call a data line or input. So when I apply voltage to here, what happens is um, I get, basically, I close the switch. So current will flow through here. So I get a voltage. Um, 
negative voltage that goes through here now. When the switch is closed, like a light switch, it's off. So no, no voltage or current is going through um, this line in N type. P type is opposite. Um, and we denote it by <coughs> putting a um, little circle right there. See the wrong letter. So same thing, plus B. So, um, so opposite here is so if I put a one here, the switch is closed. So no current flows through this, no voltage or current goes through here. If I put a zero out here, the switch is closed, and I get voltage going through. Right. So basically, it's, remember that n type is opposite of p type, or p type is opposite of n type, and the only thing we note by this little knot here. So basically, this little circle. When you say closed, that you're saying that's the same as that charge going across the filament in the yeah. light bulb? Yeah. There's a charge going across? Yeah, the charge going across here. That would be closed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That seems counter to what you would think closed means. So you're saying that. <coughs> well, think of light switch. Like if I turn the light switch on, is what I'm saying. Closed. Oh, so, yeah. So, yeah. Um, okay. Probably a better way. Better way is if we draw that figure. So you can take a. I have a switch like this. Uh, and so if I put a zero here, the switch is open, so there's no connection here, theoretically. And then if I put a one, or I say a voltage on it, that it closes, it closes the, this line, so then I get a current going through. Okay. Right, sorry. That's that, that, that's the last thing to do. So um, that's how we, we uh, find that out. And what we do is we combine these two together to make what is known as gates. Right? And that's why we come up with the name. Let me put these things together. Um, at CMOS, have you ever heard of CMOS? Um, so we put N type and P type together to get what's known as, as uh, CMOS. So, um, so I'm just going to put in the stands for? <coughs> complementary MOS. <coughs> Supposedly you can think of as complementary being they're complements of one another in essence. So C MOS. Um, Quick question. What yeah. is the on both these types? Voltage is coming in from yeah. your left. Where does it go? Where's the out? <clears throat> I'll do it in a second. Let me, let me draw a, a gate. All right. So remember our OR gate? So we had, um, this was our input. A, B. Say, sorry. So this is we're doing or. So this is zero. This is a one. This is a one. This is a one. That's our or gate. I'm not going to test you on this, okay? So if you're worried about taking really, really good notes or accurate, um, don't worry. This is not connected, okay? This is not connected. Um, 
when I draw a uh, like a circle like that, that means it's um, the circuit's connecting or the wire's connecting to uh, that line. And then <coughs> right there. Okay. So I'm gonna do this example here. So I'm gonna put a zero voltage here, zero voltage on this line. So this is um, N type, I mean a P type here. So these switches are closed or open. Oh, it was a P type? Yeah. If it's zero. Open. They're closed. They're closed. Yeah. So I get a voltage right here at the current moment, okay? <clears throat> this is N type. <coughs> And we have a zero on this, so they are <coughs> zero. So that means they're open. Open. Yeah. So the top one should be so open. So it pops out until I get one voltage here, right? Pretty cool. All right. But it's not an OR gate, right? Yeah. It's zero, right? All right. This section here <coughs> is NOR. I think of it as not four. I need to be taller. <coughs> um, so, but it's not four, is it, Ann? <laughs> no, it's so. No, it's, I'm gonna uh, draw this out. So this is the nor part. So, um, wait. So here's the or. So we got zero, one, one, one. The nor part. So basically is. We're going to not all this, right? So it's going to be 1, 0, 0, 0. Which is different than AND, which would have 1 on the bottom. Yeah. yeah. And so, um, as we call it, NOR. So this section here <coughs> is NOR. So we have to create basically more circuitry. Or basically is a NOT gate, right? All I need to do is NOT this. So I create a NOT gate. from this side of or the NOT gate um, goes into a NOT. And NOT So we have one coming into here now. So this is P type. What happens to that one? The switch is now open. And so then this one is closed. So basically, you want to think about it. Um, I'm connected to ground or zero. And so no current is flowing from the battery to this ground, and so my output is zero now on that line. So this is my this is the output. So now, sorry, do you want to run through that again? Okay, so I have one here. So this is a P type. So P type, when one's on there, the gate is open, right? So uh, I'll do the uh, switches. So no current's going through. Yeah. And then this one is closed. This switch, this switch is closed. And so basically, it's, it's grounded. So this line is zero. All is zero. So that's why my output is zero. Okay. Like I said it's really circuitry oriented, circuit theory um, stuff, electrical engineers, computer engineer stuff. Um, like I said, don't, we don't need to memorize this. Um, like I said, it's free information to say, hey, we're starting to connect how electricity um, is used in computers to get ones and zeros um, for us. Um, so these gates. Um, I'm not going to go through all the gates if you want to. The book shows all these circuitry, circuits for um, the AND gate, the OR gate, the OR, the NOT. And so um, that's how the transistors inside the computer 
make our computer logic. But we're going to create boxes. So we're going to go up one level high, higher and create um, symbols for these gates. Um, just because drawing all the transistors out is a pain. So we're going to denote out um, symbols um, for gates. So Here's our logic. So we have the not gate. Remember, not not was we had one input for the not and um, one output, and it just flipped the bits or flipped the um, data. So um, this is the um, symbol for a not. So you think about it is zero comes in, a one comes out. One comes in, a zero comes out, and for those who are taking a computer uh, comp theory, I think it is. Did it? Did it? No. Digital design. No. Oh. Logic symbols than what you use in, in there. Apologize. Um, for those who deal with engineers like I do, engineers like to make their own world and use their own symbols. Mathematicians to mathematicians. And so um, basically, you can use the, I forgot what the symbol was called, it's like a, an under, uh, upside down L, diverse. Um, I will probably just constantly use. And with a bar on top. Not. Yeah, this is a knot. And our A was a little um, apostrophe on top. Um, so in C programming, uh, um, we use the little squiggly on. Believe me. Well, that's a tilde. Is that a tilde? Yeah. Or, yeah. Yeah, you can use the apostrophe. Yeah, I think you can use the apostrophe. I haven't. It's much more. Yeah, I, I've always just used that. And so, um, then we have what's known as um, a Venn diagram. Um, so, Venn diagram, we have a box, and we have a circle. <coughs> so this is A, <coughs> and a not gate is basically everything outside A, right? <coughs> so a not is everything outside of what is inside A. Out here is not A, and inside is A. Um, again, we do this just with the not gate. So so there's our truth table for the not gate. And A is 1, 0, output is 1. A is 1, output is 0. Alright, next one is AND. And we have two inputs for the AND gate. It looks like that. Um, so we denote it with a dot. B are just A, B. <coughs> um, so 
think about it as like multiplication. Mm -hmm. So A times B, but don't I don't like that way. So it's A A and B. Um, C we use the green mm -hmm. symbol. It's very useful. And <coughs> So, what was and? What was the definition of and? Yeah, so, if the inputs are one, the output is one, right? So, so we do a Venn diagram. You got A, you got B. So, what basically is, what is inside A what's inside B that are the same. So they both have to be both inside A and B. So in a Venn diagram, everything in that both A and B cover is and together. Oh. I'm not going to do the two table now. So no. that's the end. We got the or. Side that kind of points and fit there and has an output. And an or we use the plus, so it's A R B. Um, and programming is that like an exclusive? No, it is or. Um, exclusive or. There's some symbols that are similar. Um, so <clears throat> we use this bar. Um, and, and so that bar is that the pipe on the keyboard? Yeah. Yeah. Then the Venn diagram about the same A and B covered. So the definition of or was one, it basically is, one of the inputs have to be one, or both, to be output to one. So basically, it has to be either, it has to be in A, it has to be in B, or it has to be in both. So, so everything that A covers, everything B covers, and everything they both cover. So that's our, um, our diagram for the knot. Uh, or so those are the three that we talked about earlier. We're going to talk about, probably, uh, well, Monday we'll talk about three other ones. So.